when they were at rematches, whether they're going to live up to the hype and be as good as the first one. I don't think we've got anything to worry about with either of these two. Uh, both fighters are better now. They, they're both improved. They're both um, had more experience. They both know each other. They both know what they're in for. Uh, there's an element of the unknown in the first fight, yet they'd sparred probably about 80 and 90 rounds of each other prior to the first fight. A lot of people don't really realise that. So they really know each other. So going into that first fight, they both were full of confidence. This time round, you know, Dylan White's had great success uh, of late. Um, Dylan White, sorry. Chisoro's had great success behind closed doors. And uh, I, I, I believe the performance he put up here, which you saw there, he's in such better physical condition um, going into this, this next one. What's changed? Because I think it's fair to say in the past that maybe discipline's been a bit of an issue, which yeah. is all you mentioned about the eating, they're not going to the yeah. restaurant, they're eating some kind of bad <laughs> yeah. food. Well, what else has changed with him? It's just the volume of training, the volume of training, the type of intensity that he trains in the past. He's kind of trained it on his own schedule. I don't put my trains out on my arms aching, so I'm not going to train. Whereas now you have a schedule to train. We have to do X amount of sessions per week. We need to, if, you, if you miss this bit, we have to do extra tomorrow. So he just has to get the volume of training. So when he gets into the, this, this soul-searching zone, he's not fighting on fumes. You know, he's not falling over because he's, he's out, of, out of energy. He's still got, he still can keep punching. And uh, fights for three minutes of the round to exhaustion, and to know when he sits down on the stool at the end of the three minutes, feeling completely zapped, he knows in that one minute rest, his heart can come down and he can recover and he can go back out there for another three minutes of hell, three minutes of hell. And um, something I used to do in my training, and I've tried something I've tried to I've talked to Don about and to his conditioning coaches, and he's, and he's doing it, he's pushing his, 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 his anaerobic threshold way further than he's ever done. And you can, you can see it, you know, the bursts, he's, he's, you know, in here he has two or three massive bursts and then he kind of needs to sit on the ropes and take some punishment to, to have a breather. That doesn't work against this version of Dylan because he just keep the pace, keep the pressure on him. Do you think the mindset's changed though, like Dylan? I mean, watch, he's, watching he's that. Yeah, he is, but like when we watched the first clubs were off, mm. it was just like this, like, road man, like mm. just this guy who was like raw. Mm. Yeah, his first clubs were off. Didn't really have anything to lose. Yeah. It was a British title defence. He hadn't really earned a lot of money at that yeah. stage in his career. Now, all of a sudden, he's sitting on the verge of a world title yeah. shot. He's made a lot of money. But, but Chisora hasn't changed. Chisora's the same person mm -hmm. as he was in the build-up to that fight. But Dylan, look, he looks very different. Mm -hmm. He's a lot more mature now. Yeah. He's a lot wealthier now. He's got a lot more to lose. Do you think that's yeah. kind of helped him? No, I just think he's well. a lot more mature as a person, uh, you know, a businessman. Uh, you know, he's, he's financially secure now. Like then he was just like he still had that street mentality. I'm not saying he hasn't got that. He definitely does. But she's always the same. Like, so it's, does he have to have that yeah. kind of fight? Mm. You know, does he have to fight like that? Because then he wanted to. He, he wasn't told to fight like that. But that was he was forced to. Yeah. But and also that was his mentality. I'm not backing that now. Mm. Is he going to be smarter? Mm. Is he going to try? Or will Derek just not enable him mm. to think smart or box smart? But. He, you know, he, he is at a different stage in his career now. So you see these young fighters coming through that are just ruthless, fearless. Mm. They have nothing. They don't know what they've got. They don't know what they've got to lose. Whereas Dylan now is at a stage where he has a lot more to lose here than Derek Chisora. A lot more to lose. Chisora's going for it. You know, he could shock the world, knock out Dillian White, try and fight for the world heavyweight title. These two will be unbearable. You know what I mean? And then you've got Dillian White, who's really, he's got it. Yeah. He's beaten all these guys. He's sitting at number one in the WBC. He's top five of everybody else. He didn't need to take this fight. Do you think they'll come fight week, they'll both be able to keep their emotions in check? Yeah, well, interestingly, the two years suspended sentence is up. So, you know, <laughs> but at the same <laughs> time, yeah, but I, I think at the same time, Robert Smith would kill me and yes. kill everybody else. I don't think they're capable, but they're, they have had that extra two years to mature. And I think, you know, a fighter would tell you, David will tell you, when you've shared that kind of experience in a ring, no matter what you think of that individual, what you thought of them before, you saw them after the belt. Mm. They, they embraced. The respect, uh, isn't uh, it? There's, there, there is definite respect. I don't think they particularly like each other, but I don't think there's that same mentality in the first fight where they just wanted to fight at all times. I think now they realise, they have to remember, that was a British title fight. You know, this is like one of the biggest heavyweight fights of the year and one of the most important heavyweight fights in the division outside of the World Championship. So it's like it's on another level now. This is this is the real big league. That was 
Dillian White coming off Dave Allen and Ian Lewison. You know, now he's coming off Lucas Brown, Joseph Parker. He's number one with the governing bodies. He wasn't even, I mean, he'd just broken into the top 15. So there's so much more in play now. And I just wonder whether in the fight it might start a little bit cagier. And then, because, I don't know, but probably not. What do you think? I definitely think um, if Dylan can keep it long and win easy, he will. I don't think he's going to want to engage in battle unnecessarily as as Eddie said he's got a lot to lose but Derek Derek knows <coughs> I've said to him you have a boxing match with Dylan you're going to come off second best you know he's got longer arms than you he loves jabbing jabbing's not your thing why bother just get involved and just this go to war from round one force Dylan to fight to have a terror because yeah. that's your best chance of winning this fight What's it been like working with Derek? I mean, it's no secret, there's bad blood between the two of you. You have knocked him out in the past. I think it's fair to say there were a fair few eyebrows raised when it was announced you were going to be looking after him. What's Especially it? for me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought, oh no. <laughs> hey, it it's, like? it's been challenging. It's been, it's been interesting. It's, you know, seeing, uh, I've used, I'm used to working with um, amateurs turning professionals, so I'm, showing the ropes and let them know how the business works, how the boxing works, training, conditioning. He's already, he's been there, done it. He's got his team, he's got his, his uh, way of working. And I'm trying to say, okay, this is how you've been doing it. You know, this is how I did it, you know, for success. You've done this for success. Okay, maybe use this guy for this. You're the nutrition guy or this guy. I'm just trying to add bits without trying to inundate him with what I used to do, because we're two very, very different athletes. We have different styles, we have different strengths physically, um, and he, he's picked and choose some of the, the bits he feels he can give him benefits, and we can see the benefits. So um, it's been interesting, um, some of the decisions he makes on certain things, I wouldn't, Have you know. Have at all? A little bit, I'm trying, I need to, I'm a little bit of a control freak, you know, so I like it how I like it, and other people, have Very their way of doing, having their way of doing things. I said that a couple of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, have, you been drag, have you been dragging him out of anywhere? I haven't, I haven't had like, you know, like. he's, he, he's been getting up. Maybe a couple of bangs on the door <laughs> to really get him out. Um, but he's, he's been turned he's been turned up for training way more. I, a lot of people told me before this all kicked off. Good luck with Derek. Uh, it was like a, it's like behind, like a. I could see great. I thought it was hilarious that I thought he was going to do the sort of training I used to do. I trained very hard, but he has. You know, this, the, the type of training he used to do, um, and say training I did, he's he, he's meeting more than halfway. You know, he's he, he's 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 doing so many more training sessions. He's getting his massage three times a week. You know, before he are kind of the massage, and now he's doing his massage. He's doing his stretching before it. He's you know he's doing all of the, he's doing all of the things that will give him those marginal gains in a fight that was so tight the first time round. Any advantage you can get, one percent, two percent, little fractions of percents here and there. Are you going to just go out? Are you going to eat straight away? Are you going to have your, your post workout shake straight away, or are you going to go out to a restaurant and, and you're at the mercy of whatever the chef decides to put in your plate? You know, so I'll try to monitor every single aspect of it, and it's tough. You know, when someone isn't used to that, you know, and then the whole team and whole infrastructure around him. It's very, they're, they're saying it's very different, the, uh, the um, feedback they get and some, you know, Derek uh, gets very moody from time to time um, and, you know, certain times you kind of got to leave him alone. I can tell sometimes, okay, he doesn't need a talking to now or, you know, keep He's still doing those mad runs where he runs, like, from his house. Yeah, I've tried to stop To the West that. End yeah, yeah, with, yeah. With, a with, a, like, a backpack oh, that's, that's, like, as big as him. Yeah, I know. And you look on his Instagram, it says, like, 3.22 a.m. Yeah. I know. Which means the yeah. like, bridge. I, 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 <laughs> we, have a, we have a training session set for 9 a.m. in the morning. He used to come to the gym and uh, he came from, I think it was Mill Hill. So he then he put his boots on and ran at 4 a.m. in the morning. Um, like when you train at 9, when, when did you sleep? Oh, no, I'll go a couple of times to run. Okay, we've got a 10-mile run in the diary then. So he, can't, he still does his thing, but he needs that. He needs to wake up and just, just go for it. Although that might mess up the whole schedule, we've got to work around Derek's schedule, and, but we're still getting the work done, so that, that long endurance um, session gets done 
when he feels like it from time well, to time. I, I can vouch that I offered him Percy <clears throat> Pig's ringside a few weeks ago and he said no. That's a big change. Yeah. So it's, it's that a big is change. the change that yeah. we've been looking for. Exactly. Even, uh, How involved have you been, though? Have you been in the ring with him at all? I haven't been. I've been in the ring in terms of uh, working with Don Charles, sort of not in, physically in the ring. I haven't been sparring with him or anything like that. I think that might be just too much, um, too many egos floating around. Um, <laughs> but in terms of being there from training, yeah, I've been there for a lot of his training. I've seen the improvement. Um, there are certain things um, like that I noticed that was happening in the fight that he's been working on. So hopefully some of the stuff that you saw him getting countered with shouldn't be happening this time and certain stuff that we're missing in that fight will be landing. You know, um, it's, it's, I, I'm telling you, it's going to be so furious very, very fast. You know, it doesn't need to be any feeling out. What are they feeling out each other out for? Derek isn't, doesn't need to feed his way into the fight and get, get behind a jab for a couple of rounds. He's got shorter arms and he's not a jabber. You know, Dylan White has got a world-class jab. You know, he can keep anyone at the end of that jab. And um, Derek needs to get busy very, very fast. What do you think? What kind of fight are you expecting second time? Well, I think what well, David said, like, Chisora can't afford <laughs> to do anything else but make it a dogfight. Yeah. And he's very good at making it a dogfight. I mean, you saw against Carlos Takan, it was the weirdest tactics I've ever seen, where he just sat on the ropes. He got beaten up for like two minutes and then beat Takan up for a minute, lost uh, many rounds, but then took his time. To, and, and then just when he got to like the fifth or sixth, you started thinking, well, he's tiring, Takan. You know, and then they chinned him twice and it was, it was, it was unbelievable. But he broke Takan. That's what he done. He soaked it up and then he broke him. I don't advise that he soaks it up against Didi and White. I can't, I can't do that. You know, but at the same time, you see him take so many risks. Like how many times was he trading there? With his chin in there, he has got an unbelievable chin, like remarkable chin. But you can't keep in your career taking shots, taking shots, taking shots. And Dillian White can't afford to take shots, take shots. Dillian White, let's not forget, was 10 seconds away from losing his last fight, basically. You know, it's a mixture of being hurt but being exhausted mm. against against Parker. So we talk about, oh, Chisora was in a real rough fight last time out. Is he the same fighter? Dillian White was in a tough fight, and he, he was on the floor 10 seconds from the final bell, look, struggling to get to his feet. So they're both capable of, of tiring, they're both capable of being hurt, they're both capable of trading when they shouldn't trade, or trade with a twin chin in the air, and they're, they're not afraid to do it. I think Dave's right. Dillian would prefer, and I'm sure Mark Tibbs would be saying to him, you don't need to be having that kind of fight with Chisora. But unfortunately, when you've got this relentless guy who's making you fight at all times, you have to fight back. Because one, it's in his DNA, and two, he can't afford then to not fight back. So it's going to be mad. It's going to be an extension of what you've just seen. Because Chisora won't, like, like that, Chisora won't go in there and he won't lose five or six rounds on a spin by not trying to put it on Dillian White. Because what's the point? This is his last roll of the dice. He's not scared. He's been here before. It's what he does, and it's what he does best. What about the AJ carrot that's been dangled? It's interesting with everything that's been going on with, with Fury Wilder. You know, like we don't know what's going to happen. You know, if we got Wilder, which is our number one choice, brilliant. If we got Fury, which would probably be our number two choice now, brilliant. If not, we look at December 22 and say the winner of that fight is, an, is a must, really, if we don't get Wilder or Fury. And they that's, will that's probably agree with that. Yeah, it is, but whatever happens, like, the heavyweight scene is so vibrant right now, you have to say that the winner of White Chisora is the number four heavyweight in the world. Right? And beyond that, you've got Lewis Ortiz, you've got Jarrell Miller, you know, you've got a whole <coughs> list of guys now. You've got like basically ten guys in the division that would all give you competitive fights, which hasn't been the case for a long, long time. But this fight with the profile and obviously with the carrot and, and you know, I, I don't know, I mean... AJ's always said, you know, AJ, like, Chisora's one of AJ's heroes, really, because when he was growing up, he was down Finchley, and he always looked at Chisora as like, oh, that's, that's how you make it, look at Derek Chisora, like, he's unbelievable. But Chisora's yes. the only person that hasn't called out AJ. Like, yeah, because I think they, for that reason, like, AJ's always <coughs> said, I wouldn't fight Chisora, like, he was like, he was like God to me, down Finchley. But, that changes quite quickly, I mean, he's not <laughs> telling me he's going to fight Chisora, but, I know he would fight Chisora, but, Chisora's still not what we're looking at. You know, we're looking at undisputed championships, but we also know that if that's not possible for April, this fight is going to be one that the winner will not just want to fight AJ, but the public will say, OK, you can't get Wilder Fury, 
So fight White or fight Chisora if he wins. And if it wins by brutal knockout, and these guys are screaming and shouting for a world heavyweight shot, people's opinions quickly turn. Don't get me wrong. The public now want AJ Wilder or AJ Fury. Or Wilder Fury rematch. And Dillian White or Chisora go, yeah, good fight, but you know, we, we. on December 22nd, that could all change. Oh, no. Alexander Usyk, could that be a name that... Oh, apparently that's, that's already done for April the 13th, but we have not even had a conversation with Usyk. I'm seeing him this week. He's coming over for the fight next week as well. Usyk, unless he's completely crazy, he will want one or two fights at heavyweight before he fights Anthony Joshua. But maybe he fancies it. I mean, Jarrell Miller is another fight. That maybe we go, yeah, maybe we go to America. I mean, the, Jarrell Miller against one of these guys. You know, if Joshua gets wild, like anyone's in play. I said in an interview earlier, anything can happen on April the 13th. Anything. Could be Wilder, could be Fury, could be Chisora, could People be White, could be Lucy. I can't tell you right now. But, you know, I, I made the mistake last time. We both did, actually. Both camps are talking too much during negotiations. And I'm not saying anything this time. That's first. So, I know. There is. So, so we go to New York this week. Rocky Field in Brighton, Canelo, which is... I, I, never that. Thought I don't believe you'll not be able to say anything. I'm, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Because I want to make it happen. Um, but I'm really... I mean, a lot of people are excited about this fight. In boxing, particularly. And a lot of the fighters. You know, AJ will be here. Bellew will be here. David's obviously going to be there. Usyk's fighting over. Gerald Miller's fighting over. You know, you can bet your life Wilder and Fury will be watching yeah. this fight as well. Because the first one was brilliant. And no one knows what's going to happen. I think Dillian is a slight favourite in this fight because of his form. But, you Do you know, think people underestimate each other? No, I just think Dylan's shown that he's improved and improved. He's probably slightly f the fresher of the two. But the win against Takam really spun everything on his head because Takam is, is a very, very good fighter. Takam will probably be on the bill. And we're looking to get him an opponent now. It's not easy. Like Michael Hunter, you know, all these guys look at Takam and go, no thanks. So he's just been knocked oh, out. Yeah. So no, 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 no. He's, something, he's someone we don't need. You know, Dave Spardin was saying earlier, just, just a nightmare. And, and that's what Shizora went in with him, no problem. Yeah. And knocked him out. And he don't care, he has no fear. Right, shall we um, open it up to the floor? <coughs> Your chance to grill him. Any questions?